Acts chapter 11. I'm just going to share it with you real quick, real quick. We're just going to run through this real quick. Because now I'm starting to see a little bit of what God's wanting to do. Acts chapter 11. Uh, we're just going to pray real quick. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Lord, you bless your word. Lord, your word, your word, your word, your word can take down strongholds. Your word can break chains. Your word sets the captive free. All in the name of Jesus. So Lord, I pray you help me tonight. Help me tonight. Lord Jesus, help me as I preach your word. I just want to be faithful to you. Not about eloquent speech, but about heart purity. Lord, help me. Help me. Help us tonight as your word goes forward. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter 11. That's where we're at. <clears throat> and so, uh, <clears throat> passage of scripture here. I don't know if I preached on it before. I probably talked about it at some point. But Acts, Acts chapter 11 here. And we, we see this part. <clears throat> Peter. Uh, uh, Peter is gone back up to Jerusalem and Peter is going to share with them what God has been doing and, and how God has been moving not just with the Jews and amen. this is very important right Pentecost has happened God's word is spreading right people are being saved people are being filled with the Holy Spirit people are being transformed right not just Jews now everybody starting to be transformed right so I, I, I want to share with you just a little bit uh, about what is leading up to Acts chapter 11 because here in a minute I'm just going to read Acts chapter 11 a, a couple of verses but first uh, I'm going to get to the place where we need to be at to understand Acts chapter 11 because I just told you Acts chapter 11 Peter goes back and he starts telling the church all these things that are going on all the things that are taking place and so <clears throat> Peter would go in and he is going to share with them the things that have been taking place with the Gentiles. Right? He goes back, Acts chapter 11, is going to deal with this whole sense uh, of the council at Jerusalem trying to figure out what in the world Peter's doing. Right? Because they're thinking something ain't right here. Now, <clears throat> Before Peter goes up back to Jerusalem and shares with them everything that's happening, I, I want you to grab a glimpse of what Peter has just experienced himself. It, it goes all the way back to uh, Acts chapter 9. And, and in Acts chapter 9, you will see this story of, of uh, <clears throat> a man that it says in Acts chapter 9, starting in verse 32. This is where Peter, up to that moment, Paul has talked about Acts chapter 9, verse 32, Peter comes on the scene and he begins to talk about everything that's taking place with Peter's ministry that is going to lead up to an important part, right? God knows what he's doing. He knew what he was doing then. He knows what he's doing now, right? God knows what he's doing. So here in verse 32 of Acts chapter 9, it, it says that uh, Ananias or Annias, however you want to say his name, uh, it, it says that Peter was going through and... <clears throat> It says that he just happened to find a man. Now, it says it found him on the side of the road. Now, I don't know about you. How many people you ever just found on the side of the road? <laughs> Peter's going along. He's, he's found this man on the side of the road. Now, what? This man has been an invalid for eight years. Hadn't walked for eight years. And Peter, it, Scripture says, found him on the side of the road. Just coincidence, of course, right? Just coincidence. And, and watch it. It says when Peter found him, Nobody else coerced him to do anything. It, watch it, it was the heart of God inside him that he would look at him and says, Guess what, Ananias? Get up off that thing. Jesus heals you. I know what? That's what Scripture says he said. And it says he got up. Now what? This is what's going on in Peter's life right now. Just imagine that. Imagine you find someone on the side of the road. <laughs> you don't get to take them home. Right? You don't get to do that. You find someone on the side of the road that's crippled. You look at them. They've been there for eight years. 
and you look at them and say, guess what? Jesus Christ heals you. Get up. Whoa. Guess what? Fame spread throughout. Now, it is not about Peter, about Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now, if you were to go down just a little bit, you'll see this story of Dorcas. How many remember that, that name? Right? That's a name that sticks out like crazy. You know, don't name your child that. But anyway, Dor Dorcas, right? So the other name is Tabitha, right? So you know better Tabitha. Well, Tabitha died. They said they knew Peter was close. They sent someone to go get Peter and said, get that old boy up here. <laughs> Peter shows up there. Now, what Scripture says is this. Peter shows up, very familiar passage of Scripture that will take your mind back to another time. It says this, Peter put them all out of the house. He saw one of the greatest teachers ever do the same thing. Uh, right? He put them all out of the house. Now watch what it says. If you were to go to Acts chapter 9 and look at that part, starting in about verse 38, 39, something like that, <clears throat> going down through there, it, it says this. It says that when Peter put him out of the house, he goes back in. Now watch this. He didn't go over to the body. You say, why is all that important? Evidently, it's pretty important, the first thing he does. You know what the first thing he does? It says he got down on his knees and he prayed away from the body. Wasn't even looking at the body. He got on his knees and he began to pray. And then it says this. After he got done praying, he gets up and goes over to the body. Boy, there's something special about prayer. There's power in prayer. Never try to do anything unless you've been praying. Peter goes over there, and you know what he said? Tabitha, get on up. Boom. Says he, what? Grabbed her by the hand, got her out of bed. Now, what? I think it's great. Now, I don't know. I can't remember what the King James says. But the ESB says this, and he presented her to everybody. Y'all didn't think that was funny. I thought that was awesome. She's dead and they know it. And Peter says, uh, there's some power. Get out. Lord, I trust you. I know. Tabitha, get up. Whew. Wow. Watch this. Peter was not surprised. Peter has faith. Gets that old girl up, goes back out, says, here she is. Everybody's like, oh. <laughs> What? Now, I, you go back and read at the end of those stories. So about verse 36, and then you go on down uh, 40 something, going down. But you know what it says at the end of those stories? Fame spread out through so much. Watch this. About Jesus, that many of them got saved. God's on the move. You say, Pastor, why is all this important? Well, because now you get into verse 10. Right? Peter and Cornelius. You remember Cornelius, right? Right? He was of the Italian cohort. That's, that's interesting, isn't it? Still run by the Roman government, but he was Italian, and, but he did have a place in there. <clears throat> and so anyway, it, it says that a vision came to Cornelius. You remember that? Had this vision, right? And the crazy thing was that in that vision, watch this, God knew what he was doing, gave a vision to Peter as well at the same time, and said, hey, I gave a vision to him. I told him that he needed to send people to you, so I'm giving you a vision telling you that I spoke to him and he's sending people to you. I'd be like, just, you're going to have to help me out. I lost you, Lord. What, what you, you've got everybody going. But anyway, right? Shows up, everything happened. And it, and, and it says this that, that Peter went as the Lord directed him, right? When they showed up the next day, three men showed up. And they all went back. It ended up being six total. They all go back. They go to Cornelius. Cornelius comes in. And, man, it was just powerful. You say, why is it powerful? I'll tell you here in a minute. So now, <clears throat> we get on down here. I don't, even, I don't even know where I'm at in my notes. I ain't got a clue where I'm at here. Anyway, <laughs> Lord, you got to help me through the rest of this. <laughs> why is this important, Pastor? Well, it's important because of this reason. Why in the world would I even talk about that? Well, I talk about that because you've got to understand what Peter has just experienced through the power of the Holy Spirit 
and then he has to go back to Jerusalem. You say, well, why is going back to Jerusalem so important? Well, look at this. Read with me, chapter 11, starting in verse 1. It says this, Now the apostles and the brothers, the sisters, who were throughout Judea, heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. You remember, that's what happened with Cornelius. Remember that? Right? He showed up. Why did he show up? Because God says, I want to do something good in their life as well. Boom. Revealed. Received the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going down verse 2. <laughs> so when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him. Hmm. I am. Criticized him. Why is that so important? You've got to remember everything Peter's just went through. Lame man, dead person. Vision, Holy Spirit falling. Why is that important? Because of that word there, King James uses a different word in there instead of criticized. Uh, it uses the word contended, right? So anyway, it says that when he got back to Jerusalem, this party contended with him over what was going on. And well, why is that so important? Because of verse 3. Verse 3, it says this, You went to the uncircumcised men and ate with them. What did? That's all they were worried about. You didn't follow the rules that we had put in place that you needed to do. No. Peter has just been in a time of revival, and look at what Satan's trying to do. Pull the rug out from under him. Great times are happening. Victories have come. And then I have, what, I have to go back to church. And the church tries to take it away. Whoa, boy, did you see that? Oh, I, it wasn't the world trying to take it away. Grab hold for just a second. You see, that word contend or criticize means this. To separate in a hostile spirit. Which means to oppose, to strive with, or to dispute with. Right? This is what Peter ends up going back into. He's just been in some of the most awesome services ever. Of not only healings, people coming back to life, but people getting saved. And has to end up going back to people that are trying to figure out why in the world did you eat with them. I mean, would you, I mean, we're just very fortunate James and John was not with Peter. Can you hear them? You want us to rain down fire on these people? <laughs> we'll do it right now. But I want you to watch something here about Peter. Unbelievable response. Peter was the hothead. Peter cut off Malchus's ear in the garden. Peter stuck his foot in his mouth all the time. Peter was gung-ho for anything. Let's do it. And he gets slapped in the face when he gets back. And watch his response. Oh, boy. Now, it's a little bit longer, but I need you to grab hold with me for just a moment. Now, watch what it says here. <clears throat> Verses 4 through 16. That's a lot, ain't it? Verses 4 through 16. Bear with me. Because it's important. It says this. But Peter began and explained it to them. I love this part. In order. You say, well, what does that mean? <clears throat> I think he told the story just the way it happened. That's what I think. So that. Peter says this, verse 5. I was in the city of Joppa praying. And in a trance, I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners. Y'all remember this story, right? I'm still going to read it just so we really grab hold of it. Huh. And it came down to me. In verse 6, looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts and prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, ain't no way, God. <laughs> that was my translation. By the way, he says this, by no means. Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. He was a good Jew. <clears throat> Verse 9. But the voice answered a second time from heaven. What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times. 
We thought Peter wasn't hard-headed. Three times. It's okay if you didn't get it the first time. <laughs> Three times. This vision happened with Peter and that voice continued to speak to him. Now what? This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. Verse 11. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, which we were sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them. Man, he's in tune. He's in tune. He's just been in revival. He's just been preaching. He's just been healing. He's just been raising the dead. He's just been seeing people get saved. He's just been seeing all these things happen. But he didn't miss it Says he was in the spirit And the spirit spoke to him Why did? When good things sometimes start to work through us If we're not careful we get the big head And we miss the spirit Peter just went through all that And it says this And I heard the spirit say to me Don't lose it Have that ear He's wanting to do something Now watch we're going down just a little bit further Somebody help me where we at Where we at Where we at Verse 12 all right. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. Verse 13. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in the house and say, Send to Joppa, bring to Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. Verse 15, and I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as it was on us at the beginning. And I remembered, verse 16, and I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You say, Pastor, why is that all important that you had to bring this into it? Because they were missing the boat. They had heard the report, watch this, and the report did nothing for them. Before he got back, he'd already, they'd already heard everything that's going on. You let somebody raise somebody from the dead, it's going to spread. You let somebody raise somebody who's been crippled for eight years, it's going to get out. Then all of a sudden, people start getting saved everywhere. Man, church is just running rampant, and man, it's crazy. All right. Word got back to Jerusalem. They knew what was going on, and they missed the boat. Now, instead of Peter, now get this, instead of a hothead, instead of a stubborn man, three times, three times had to tell him. Instead of that going on, watch this, somebody comes up to Peter and questions him about his motive even knowing everything that had went on and can't deny the power that was put in play, what's what happened? Peter says this. Oh, let me tell you the story. That's not Peter. Peter's one like this. You must not have heard about me in the garden. <laughs> right? That's Peter. Oh, but something changed. Something changed in Peter. See, when Pentecost happened, why did you, you get filled with the Spirit, you'll change. But all of a sudden, Peter's hit with this contention. He's hit with all this saying, I can't believe that you go it. And instead of Peter losing it, Peter said, you know what? There's something about this soft answer turns away wrath. I'm just going to tell you the story of what I got to witness. He tells that story. You say, Pastor, why is that important that he told the story in order? Why is that so important that he did that? Well, <laughs> to me, I look at it as a response that is beyond all responses. There, what? what? He didn't say... Oh, now look what God's going to do to you. He didn't say, boy, I hope you get it. Well, he didn't, he didn't say any of that. He just shared what God did. Now, because he did that, we have something at the end of this story. And it's good. You say, Pastor, why are we going through all this? Well, because we, we, we just are. <laughs> Verse 17. Verse 17 says this. It then, Peter speaking, 
it then, God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. Who was I that I could stand in God's way? Peter didn't cut their ear off. Peter didn't take out a gun if he had one and shoot them. Peter didn't do all that. Peter just asked a question after he told everything that happened in order. And he just says this. If you were me and you saw what happened like I saw what happened, you going to stand in the way of God? Just asking you. You're going to stand in the way of him? Because Peter said this, I've learned my lesson. I ain't standing in the way of God. <laughs> when God's moving, you better watch out. You better let God do what God wants to do. Because good things happen when we do that. And so we, we see this part. And we see what Peter begins to do there. But why? because of what he does, because of what he says, because of the question he poses, look at verse 18. At verse 18, we have this unbelievable thing that happened because they didn't start out this way. This is a people that when he got back, I promise you this. Watch this. By the time Peter got back to get to Jerusalem, they'd already had a lot of meetings. They had already talked about this thing that was going on. And they said, you know what? When Peter gets back, we're going to give him the what for. We're going to ask him, why in the world is he over? And now listen to me. Somebody that's got that much time to come up with something, is that the best question they got? Why are you over there eating with them? That's all you got. <laughs> You've had all this time. And that's the only question that you can ask me. Thank you, Lord, for not putting me in that situation. I probably would stuck my foot in my mouth. But, Lord, anyway, it is. Look at their response. Verse 18. <clears throat> when they heard these things, I love this. Are you ready? You ready? When they heard these things, they fell silent. Wow. <laughs> Evidently, there were others that had a bigger mouth than Peter. <laughs> Because that's what we're getting here. Because remember, he tells this story. But evidently, they've been running their mouth. And it says when he got done, silence. Silence. Now, it wasn't just silence, the Scripture says. Because the Scripture says that something happens after that. They make a statement. All right, then. Don't you love it when a council puts out a statement? Usually, it doesn't mean anything. When it, y'all think I'm joking? <laughs> I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of, of councils, from political to religious, put out their statement, and it didn't a bit more clarify anything than a man in the moon. No good, no good. But now what? They clarified it. Watch this. Here's what they say. <clears throat> and they glorified God. Well, there's a big transformation. Saying, then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. And what? You say, Pastor, why is that so important? Because Peter did not lose his cool when people tried to pull the rug out from under him. Sets here. And he says, Lord, you help me answer this in the right way. Because if I don't answer this in the right way, I'm just going to cause more problems. And Lord, you know the last thing that I want to do is continue to be one known as that causes problems. <laughs> and so Peter thinks for a minute. The spirit, I believe, comes over him. And he tells them the story in order. And he tells it in such a way that they absolutely, by the end, lose their voice lose the breath that they were trying to speak with and they said well, there's nothing we can say against that people that weren't on the boat before he started speaking were on the boat by the time he got done speaking think about this you say pastor what are you coming around to with talking about this. Well, the, the title of my message, I want to go back and look at it. <laughs> there it is. 
If I were to, you can pull that up now, I'm sorry. The title of my message would be just be this, No Deterring. No Deterring. It, you, you say, well, why, why would you do that? Oh, I can promise you this. When good things happen, Satan's coming. And boy, he's going to try to deter. Boy, he's going to try to pull the rug. <clears throat> and it says this about the word deter. It means this. Are you ready? See, see if you've ever heard a voice whisper this. It means discourage someone from doing something by instilling doubt or fear of the consequences. Imagine if Peter would have allowed Satan to speak into his ear and he missed the voice of God. But because he didn't miss the voice of God, it changed the dynamic of the church. They got in the boat. They said, no, we can't stand in the way. No, we can't do anything different. You did exactly what needed to be done. So here's what I'm going to encourage. See, because we're, we're thinking about what the Lord's doing tonight. That's it. Think about what the Lord's doing tonight. You start playing something if you want to. Think about this. What? Wait. <clears throat> Ain't nobody in here. Not a single person. From the youngest to the oldest, not a single person. There is nobody in here. Nobody in here. You may not have been here in this time, but the Lord's already built some things to you. So the thing is this. Can't nobody deny what God's been doing. Impossible. Impossible. It's impossible. You know why? Because it's real. It's real. And now watch this. Had a lot of people get saved. Had a lot of people surrender. Had a lot of people come back to the Lord. Now watch this, church. Don't you miss it because Satan's trying to come in and speak. Because I promise you, he's trying. And he's trying. Watch this. He's trying by the time we get to baptism... We're going to have baptism service, by the way. He's trying by the time we get to baptism to talk some people out of it. He's actually going to try even tonight with some of you all that are sitting here, core group, try to talk you out of believing what actually happened in somebody's life. Why? Because that's Satan. And that's what Satan does. But the thing about it is this. I want to know this. I've already had to answer it for myself. So I'll ask you. What are you going to do when the time comes? What are you going to do when Satan whispers in your ear? What are you going to do when he says it wasn't real? What are you going to do when he says it didn't really take place? What are you going to do when it says, oh, I just don't know if that really took in their life? What are you going to do? Or are you, what? Or are you going to step back? hear the voice of God and say you ain't deterring me you ain't deterring I'm in this church it's Jesus's and we ain't backing down we ain't stopping as a matter of fact Satan what are you ready as a matter of fact Satan we're taking back the ground you took as a matter of fact just go ahead and bank on it. This is going to be a regular occurrence. Because this is our church. This is what Jesus gave to us. And we ain't about to let Satan steal anything else that he's tried to already take. As a matter of fact, we're going to pray our family back in. We're going to pray this community that's hooked with every addiction that you can think of out of that addiction. Because we're tired of what Satan's tried to do. What are you going to do? You going to stand your ground? You ready to fight? Are, we, are you ready to say this? Lord, just leave the 99. Bring my family home. 
because I can't do it. But by prayer, it'll happen. Are you ready? What's your answer going to be? What's your answer going to be? Is it going to be stern? Or are you just going to say this? Mm, I ain't standing in the way of God. He can have his way. Let's do it. You stand tonight. Lord.